good morning everybody it's 12 o'clock so it's time for our weekly facebook live um it's obviously not very nice out there today so um i'm assuming there's lots of you probably sat at home um ready to uh, send me your questions um i've had some questions that have come in via email and i will pick them up as we go through but much of the um issues um since last week have been around um the behavior of people at the beaches uh and the car parking situation you may have seen me on national news on sunday i'm apparently going to be on again on politics england this weekend um and um we we've 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 made a lot of the um, national papers which is tricky because what we don't want is to encourage people down here we don't want people to think that it's um, it's not a well-maintained and managed place, but we do need to send the message out to people that now is not the time to visit, um, to come back. In a few weeks' time, when our um, shops and restaurants are ready to deal with it, and when our staffing levels have been able to be uplifted to take into account all of the, um, all of the changes, we still have around about 100 people who are unwell due to... Um, various illnesses that can't work and another 250 or so who are shielded or self-isolating due to underlying health conditions some of those are actually in key roles so for example um one about 20 percent of our existing um traffic warden uh, staff are currently in the shielded category and that's often because of the type of people who take on the role of being traffic warden um have often come from a different career and they may have moved from um, a, a more uh, a, a role that required them to be much more healthy. They moved to a role as a traffic warden or a civil enforcement officer, as we call them. And, uh, and, and as a result, they're not able to be out. Um, you can't just redeploy somebody from one role to another um, in a civil enforcement. There is um, a period of training that is required. And uh, therefore, even if we were to implement people from other other roles assuming that they wanted to deal with some of the awful stuff traffic wardens have to deal with and um, it would be a six to eight week lead time so we are working as hard as we can extending people's hours giving overtime etc so um just uh, to look at the questions we've got on here why is there a sewage breach into the sea um christina i will take that up if there's a breach we'll be straight on to it um i don't know whether it is a sewage breach i'm sure it won't be but i would just say i did have a report a few days ago about what was described as dirty water at Branksome. Uh, it actually was not dirty water it was an algal bloom the algal bloom which is um doesn't look great uh, it's perfectly safe and it's not related to anything that we are doing um, and doesn't affect the safety or quality of the water um update on weddings okay jess this is so frustrating i actually had an email yesterday in my daily updates from mhclg which is the ministry of local government and they confirmed that weddings are still not allowed um, unless they are for very specific limited reasons and pretty much those reasons are that somebody um, is perhaps not well enough to survive um, delaying their wedding so we're still able to do weddings in, in hospitals hospices those sorts of things um, and also where there's a legal issue so perhaps where somebody's um, somebody may not be allowed to stay in the country if their wedding is delayed pretty much they're the only weddings that can take place at the moment we are looking at we aren't cancelling at the moment our um, our ceremonies from July onwards, but anything up to July will have been cancelled. We're not taking any bookings for weddings because we don't know yet uh, what the rules are going to be. Um, but we will not be doing any um, uh, events, so receptions and things like that over this summer. And everyone who has had a booking has been contacted and offered the opportunity to move it if possible to the same date next year or to an alternative date um, we will keep you up to date if your wedding is booked we will keep in touch with you james says we should be shutting the car parks okay let's deal with this head on uh, this weekend we had tens of thousands of people here uh, one or, there was one particular car park that was closed and we had 59 cases uh, within about 100 yards of that car park of illegal parking people on pavements, on roundabouts, blocking people's driveways. Um, we shut the car parks. We're not going to stop people coming. 
you might stop somebody who lives in, I don't know, Kinson or, or Wimborne or Verwood who gets down, goes, oh, no car parks open, we'll go to Moores Valley or we'll go to the New Forest. But if you've driven from Birmingham or London or Basingstoke or I've even heard people this weekend that came from Wigan and Liverpool, you are not going to turn around because the car parks are shut. You are going to leave your car. And we have people parked on the pavements in Bath Road going, stuff it. I'm leaving my car. So shutting the car park does not help. It's a public safety. We had issues yesterday with a child who was missing. And because of the way cars were parked everywhere, the police struggled to get there. So no, we're not shutting the car parks. We may shut specific car parks if, if what we don't want is when car parks are full, we don't want people driving round and round and round and round, poisoning the air. We will be trying to encourage them to move on elsewhere. And we are looking at putting staff on the entrances of car parks so that we can tell them where is quieter. Uh, but again, we need to redeploy staff who are able to do that and staff who are prepared to deal with the abuse that some people will give them for saying, actually, do you think you could like go five miles up the road to Southbourne? Um, Andy White has said he started a group about uh, beach cleaning. He's a superstar, save our coastline, doing great things. But let me tell you what the council are doing, because the reason we went down on Sunday um, was because we needed to show some solidarity to the amazing staff who are down there um, and, uh, and doing their job on the seafront. OK, so normally we would have a couple of hundred staff midsummer, and those couple of hundred staff would be out there talking to people, making sure they understand the rules about barbecues, dogs, keeping an eye on lost children, uh, giving people directions, keeping an eye on the toilets, all of those things. At the moment, we've got about 25. Um, and you can't redeploy instantly because that we, if you remember, we've redeployed 650 people from their current jobs to other jobs. Most of them are still doing that or their old jobs are coming back online. So we don't have pools of hundreds of people. We're recruiting, our recruitment process is quite well advanced, and within a couple of weeks, we will have a lot of those people in place. But at the moment, there are also no lifeguards. Okay, that's not our decision, that's our own LI. Um, so our staff over the weekend, when it's been busy, have been prioritizing, scanning the sea for people in distress, lost children, vulnerable people, um, barbecues, dogs, and making sure that the toilet cleaning schedule is maintained. They're covering a 15 miles out of 25 people. They can't do it by foot, which is why they're in their vans. It means when there's an incident, they can get to it a lot quicker than if they've got to walk along. So at the end of the day, um, doing things like having a little chat with people um, and being present is not, not easy. So eight of us went down at the weekend to see what we could do to help. We didn't want to get in the way. We wanted to see for ourselves what the issues were. And what we basically concluded was there was a role for volunteers to support. And I'm really pleased to announce that from Friday, um, we will be able to have volunteer patrols run and supported by the council. Um, so the Save Our, Our Coastlines are doing great. If you want to go out there and, and, and talk to Andy about, about well, how you can help in your own location. But as far as formal volunteer programs that are able to take a section of the beach um, we've managed to secure some supervisors who are prepared to work with groups um, who will go out and litter pick and give general advice. It will be protected. You know, there will be um, health and safety briefings. There will also be advice around not getting involved in difficult conversations. Um, you'll be in a group. Therefore, you'll be able to have the support of a supervisor who will be able to deal with any issues for you. So there's an email going out today. Um, we are going to be using our Together We Can volunteer program. Um, and so in the first instance, everybody are going to um, who is already a, a registered volunteer will be receiving an email. Um, we will not be covering the cost of parking. So we will be saying to people, you need to make your own way down to the beach and cover your own costs. So, you know, ideally, if you can cycle or walk to the beach, that's great. Um, there will be a rendezvous point, there will be shifts, it will be going on seven days a week and we'll be reviewing it week on week, um, depending upon the supervisor's capacity to continue. So if you're already a registered volunteer, you should get an email. If you're not, you can register with Together We Can and under the issues of what can you do, there will be an other box and you can add that in there. We are changing the form so that you will be able to have a streamlined, I'm only volunteering for the beach, 
Um, so that will that will be something that you can offer to do. So that's going live Friday. There will be a press release. I've only had it confirmed probably 10 minutes ago that this has been secured. So you are literally hearing about it before the uh, before the press release goes out. Uh, please ban barbecues from the beaches. Lucy, barbecues are only allowed in specific areas. One is down between Shore Road, no, uh, down the far end of Sandbanks. There's another one at the groin. Um, going 15 barbecues are only allowed after six o'clock when I was out at the weekend I was telling people about their barbecues I had people who were basically telling me what the heck I'll just cook this and we'll put it out later um, the staff were going over with sand and just putting the barbecues out so you know we are robust about that but at the moment we have 25 staff covering 15 miles the volunteers you know have a polite word with somebody about their barbecue but we are robust and the particular one i spoke to who told me that they would eat their pork chops before they uh, put the barbecue out as soon as the smoke was seen by the guys in their van they were straight down the beach um and speaking to them so these are happening so barbecues on the beach they're not allowed uh, there is signage we've got more signage going up somebody said something about dogs on the beach um, I'm sorry I've missed it somewhere but um, you're not allowed dogs on the beach there are specific areas that are dog friendly uh, they are marked on our website you can find out where they are again within reason um, our staff are doing their best to say dog off the beach um, it, it, we can't be everywhere so the more volunteers we've got down there who are able to just politely tell people what's going on um the better so i'm a b and b owner today someone cancelled because they've seen the chaos um heather we can't build toilets and i uh, know uh, get real um somebody cancelled because of the chaos on bournemouth beaches well i'm really sorry heather but there are other b and b owners who are illegally taking bookings right now and causing some of this problem we can't build toilets the idea that we can build them overnight is completely unrealistic we have 34 sets of toilets that were open as at yesterday um, another one's being completed today following a winter refurbishment so we should have that open by early next week another one actually is being um finished on friday so again that will get stocked and cleaned and hopefully be open early next week you know our message is please don't come please don't come so hopefully by the end of July, we'll be in a position. But at the end of the day, don't blame us, blame all those people who came down and urinated behind people's beach huts and worse, um, and were doing things that weren't appropriate. So I'm sorry, um, we can't build things overnight. We also can't use port -a-loos. I'll explain why port -a -loos are really problematic. So um, I thought about this a lot, and I've been talking to people about port -a -loos. So uh, imagine you're wanting to go use a port uh, for a start they're incredibly expensive and they're generally individual um, they also have an individual door that once you've been you then have to use the inside door to open so there's a there's a, um, a hygiene issue that you can't you can't protect yourself with uh, like you would do in a public toilet you you have to handle the door then you wash your hands then you leave the main door which is can be propped open can't do that in a port -a -loop. The second issue is we have uh, 20,000 people using our toilets uh, a day, 20,000. Now, can you imagine how quickly those port -a -loos would get filled up when they're not logged into the drainage system? Can you imagine what would happen if people continue to use those toilets and we had a worse situation? So the amount of refilling and servicing that pub the port -a -loos need is massive. Um, we just don't have the staff to do that. We also don't have the access issues. The other problem we've got is socially distancing queues. If we put those portal in the car parks, we've then got a breach of safety with people queuing across the car park or potentially queuing across beach huts. So it's not really an option. Building toilets, you need planning permission. You can't avoid the fact that there are laws around what you can build. So even if we decided we'd have to design, do planning and build, that would take six months at least. Insufficiently clear, read dogs. I don't know what's insufficiently clear. No dogs on the beach unless it's a dog beach. Um, we will be putting additional um, signage in, but um, at the moment you can go completely blind with signage because there's no social, you know, socially distanced, no dogs, no barbecues. Um, you know, just behave, please. 
lots of instances of older men approaching girls as young as 10 they do not appear to be from the area it doesn't matter if they're from the area or not if older men are approaching girls then that's a police matter it's not a council matter i suggest you ring 999 if somebody is in danger um how do i volunteer tim you can volunteer go on to together we can it'll be launched officially probably with a press release later and go live on friday why are they allowed after six uh they just are um you know we need a bylaw but we don't have time to do that uh back of the beach huts and the toilet nancy right let's talk about the beach hut situation every year people urinate behind people's beach huts i find that shocking and abhorrent but apparently it is true but we've had 10 weeks with virtually no rain and we've had incredible weather which means there's a lot of people down there so um ultimately it's not as straightforward as you think that this is only happening this year it happens every year it's more problematic this year because there's more people less staff and better weather um you know we're doing everything we can our staff have had to go out and pick up this stuff so that's not really um, something that, you know, we, we can stop. Um, if we witness it happening and we have a, a what's called a CSAS officer, which are our officers that are uh, licensed under the, under the police to stop and take someone's name and address, it is an offence to do that. Um, and those officers do have the ability to take someone's name and address. And if somebody does not comply, they can call the police. It is an arrestable offence. But you've actually got to catch somebody in the act. Um, that's not easy. Someone asked a question about body cams. Yes, all of our uh, beach staff now wear body cams and sort of what looks like flak jackets. Scary. Um, why has it ha not happened before? It happens every year. Um, it's every summer. I've actually been sent press releases and stories from every summer this year with people, you know, um, having a go about this. So it's, it's not new. A read early chime parking wasn't the parking along the beach between the so the only car park that we are keeping closed and we're keeping this closed to allow for more social distancing is the park car park between the piers we have hundreds of car parks this one remains closed and it remains closed so that we can allow for the promenade to be wide enough to allow people to move along we've got no intention of reopening that car park um uh, and actually, I don't believe we should have cars that close to people. So um, I wouldn't support that car park opening ever again if I had if I had my way. Uh, burn down their tent. I'm not burning down. Right. Sleeping on beaches and car parks and um, people opening their B&Bs. So staying away overnight remains one of only two areas that the police have enforcement powers. It is currently unlawful to gather in groups of more than 10. Police matter. If it happens, not the council. It is unlawful to stay away from home. Um, unlawful police matter. So if somebody is camping out overnight, I suggest you call the police. If somebody is gathering in a group of more than 10, you can call the police. However, I caveat that by saying the police crime levels are back up to what they were pre-COVID. Um, they they are, have had their own uh, tragedies. Um, they have got major incidents. And there was a situation yesterday, a big arrest uh, for an attempted murder earlier on in the day that our police were having to deal with in Paul yesterday. A lot of us saw the uh, police activity around that. They've got uh, they had a siege at the weekend. There's a lot of stuff going on. So their priority is not going to be someone camping. We made 11 tent evictions on Sunday morning. Our staff are out there at seven o'clock in the morning removing people. Uh, it's not safe for them to remove people at 10 o'clock at night. Apart from anything else, the staff have been on since seven o'clock in the morning. Um, if we remove them at 10 o'clock at night, they're usually alcohol fueled. It's not safe for our staff. That's why it's a police matter. Uh, OK, barbecues, barbecues. OK, our B&B is being checked. Um, they're not being checked. Um, it's down to somebody to report them to the police. It's not a council matter if somebody is open. Um, okay, there are hundreds. Why can't we tow cars? We cannot tow cars. We do not have the powers to tow cars. The police have powers to tow cars. So if a car is blocking a public highway or emergency exit, um, we have to contact the police. And if the police agree with us, the police can tow the vehicle. The only circumstances that the council can actually remove a vehicle uh, is if the vehicle is abandoned and the person is actually 
uh, given the um, given appropriate notice through signage on the vehicle to say this vehicle has been abandoned if you do not remove it by X date we have the powers under the DVLA to remove it that is not the same as someone parking illegally and us towing it away a couple of hours later we do not have those um, we don't have those powers we can't do it somebody else has asked the question and I've asked the question our fines aren't big enough if you park um, the, the cost is is relatively low um, if you're used to London prices or if you've driven for four or five hours to get here um, those are set by statute our parking manager um, has actually um, been on the phone to the BPA the British Parking Association to lobby for those to be allowed to be increased again we can't just do that overnight um, it seems that most councils are still providing free parking in places so you know we're, we're going against the grain by charging people for parking we can't stop and check people on dual carriageways glenn there are no powers to stop people from traveling this is why i specifically raised on the news at the weekend and i lobbied the mps and i've had replies from some of the mps and i've just noticed an email coming in from chris chope i haven't had a chance to read it yet um is um i'm going to come to social distancing in a minute ross um is that the um, the police did have the power under the early stages of lockdown? Uh, there were very strict rules about why you could go out. Um, if you were out for a reason that wasn't on the list, you could be fined, turned around, off you go. The police don't have that anymore. There are no rules about how far you can travel, which is exactly why I said a postcode based or county based system. And the leader of Dorset has said the same, and the leader of other councils have said the same where they're in tourist areas. So we cannot legally stop somebody on the road and say, where are you from? Go home. We can't close a car park without having a reason to. Uh, we could, but we have chaos on the roads. We cannot legally stop people. You know, that's something you can't understand. Why not increase the car park charges to non-BCP residents? So we've looked at this. We have looked at whether we could put the car parking prices up by five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pound a day. Uh, 13 week consultation period is required under law for us to change the car parking uh, prices. In February, our budget included an increase in beach car parking by 20p an hour, I think. Um, but we didn't progress that in February because at the time um, that we were closing the car parks. So the um, because it's already been advertised as part of the uh, budget, uh, it's a 21-day um, advertising period, and that's now been advertised to come into effect the beginning of July. We can't do that any earlier. But anything more than the 20p uh, increase in car parking would have to go back through full public consultation. 13 weeks is three months, so that would take us to September, so it wouldn't do us any good at all. And actually, it would end up punishing local people once things are back to normal, so that's not really an option. Social distancing, right. According to the police and according to the legislation, social distancing of two metres is a guideline. It is not enforceable. If it were enforceable, it would only be enforceable by the police. The police cannot and will not enforce social distancing because it is not illegal. It is about our own public safety. So I can say to you, move out of my space. Um, I can say, I'm not going anywhere near that. I can't keep my two meters. I'll make that decision for myself. I spoke to people at the weekend and said, you're not socially distanced. And the response I was getting was, we're one family group. And I went, really, it's 15 of you. I don't think you're one family group living in the same household. And they're like, People are no longer caring about social distancing and it is not enforceable. And if it was, it's not the council. So I'm really sorry. I know it's frustrating, but there's nothing we can do. Parking is worse than the air show. Yes, Christine, it is. Um, because what we actually found this morning was our numbers were similar to air show numbers, but with 20% of the normal staff. 20% of the normal staff that we have, 25% of our civil enforcement officers who are unable to work due to bad health and no notice. The air show we know about, we can recruit people in in advance. We can plan for that. We can't plan for this. Um, 
Simon says there are towaway zones. You have to have bylaws. You can't do a bylaw overnight. Maybe in the future we can have a bylaw, but I'm really sorry, it's not possible. We can't have a residence card. Uh, Ryan, if you think I'm waffling, feel free to leave the call because I'm answering every question and I'm answering them truthfully. So I'm really, you know, I don't know what else you want me to say. The law is the law is the law. Uh, are fines a possibility? Caprice. So uh, we have recently been able to change the rules of our CSAS officers. So CSAS is Community Safety Accreditation Scheme. And our CSAS officers are licensed and work under the powers given to them by the Chief Constable of Dorset Police. They have to be vetted. They have to go through a really long process. And they are fantastic. We currently have four CSAS officers uh, working in Bournemouth and in Boscombe. We have another five who are uh, recruited and are waiting to go through the system and get themselves out working. That should be through within probably a couple of weeks. Um, those CSAS officers have certain powers which include the ability to find people for littering. Uh, as I said before, if they catch people doing uh, acts of public indecency, but they're also mainly there to deal with antisocial behaviour, rough sleeping problems, begging, aggressive begging, street drinking, all of those sorts of things. But I repeat, we currently have four and we have recruited another five. We have 400,000 people and we have something like, I don't know, 120 square miles to, to look after. Um, in order to do so, to prosecute somebody for a littering offence, you have to witness them littering, you have to then witness them walking away from it, and then you have to speak to them. Now, on a crowded beach, it's not easy to do that. So it's, I think, nigh on impossible for us to deal with littering via the CSAS uh, operators on the beach. We have to start a public education. Uh, I'll leave only footprints. Um, uh comms program it works really hard on that but you know at the moment that's why we're putting litter pickers out on the beach with our new program opening on friday and then there are independent programs and, and, and andy earlier on was talking about his um save our coastlines so um da, da, da. Uh, if we get a spike we haven't put public safety first it's not about us putting public safety first Okay, the government put public safety first. The government changed the rules. We are responding to the rules the best we can, and we have no powers of enforcement. Um, okay, so um, make points about the news. I am going to keep up the good work. I'm doing my very, very best to try and uh, keep 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 working on this. Um, can we? So the rental of beach huts. Um, I'm not quite sure whether this is a positive or negative. I, I'm not quite sure. It's gone from my screen already. So the position is that from July, we have retained bookings uh, for people who've booked beach huts um, in, in the summer period. Um, people who had booked beach huts for a day or a few days or a week um, up until the end of June, those bookings were cancelled. And the main reason they were cancelled was the level of work required by our staff to be able to get them cleaned and handed over. If you've booked a beach up for a day, the amount of work to clean them up um, is just as great as if you've booked it for a month. So they were cancelled. Um, so there's a meeting going on today, actually, which is looking at the next stage of reopening uh, with regard to all of our extra staff. And I'm really keen that where there are people who had originally had bookings later on in June, that we actually try to reinstate those. Uh, as quickly as we can and that we enable people who want to book a beach hut particularly as lots of people are now not going to be going on a foreign holiday we want to make sure that they can do that but we have to make sure we have the staff to clean them sanitize them before they're handed over so it's likely we might start with um people who are booking for a week rather than people booking for a day because of the the the, the, the cleaning issues so that will come through very soon hopefully by next week we'll have an update on that Okay. Uh, oh, it's going so fast. People are driving like idiots. Claudine, um, the police have started their Fatal Five campaign again, which is a, a public information campaign about them targeting the Fatal Five things that cause most accidents, which includes speeding. Um, so they have restarted their speeding vans going out with the cameras. Um, but if you do have a particular area that is a problem, I would suggest you go on the Dorset Police website or even better, they have a no excuses team. I think they might have their own website and you can register for places that have got a particular problem. Again, if you've got a persistent problem, it's a police matter. 101, 
uh, but if you, it, it can take a long time to get through. I don't bother using 101 by phone. I always use their website. They've got a fantastic thing. You can report any crime on there, any incident. You can put photos on there, give them all of the details. Um, at least you know them. You've given them all of the facts. Um, and you have the opportunity, if you've been a victim of crime, to register for witness, um, witness um, sorry, victim support as well. Okay, what is my opinion on the Black Lives Matter? I don't want to get into too much, but um, I did support the Black Lives Matter um, uh, uh, demonstration yesterday. I did put a public statement out. I'm really, really frustrated that there was a lack of social distancing. I totally understand uh, that there were a lot of people in a small space, uh, and I really wish that people had um, had been a little bit more careful about their spacing. However, um, you know, my kids, my teenagers, have been absolutely mortified, and, and watching some of these videos of people, a little a fourteen year old being wrestled to the ground and punched in the punched in the chest by a police officer, just made me feel physically sick. So. The Black Lives Matter thing is so important. Um, I completely support it. And, um, you know, fair play to the guys that, that did that yesterday. But please, if you're going to go out and protest, please, please, please look after yourselves too because we do not want a second spike because you're all crowded into a small space. Um, okay, uh, more litter bins on the beach. And do you know what? Our litter bins aren't full. Some of those litter bins are half empty. People would rather leave their crap on the beach. We took over 11 tons off of the sand and the shoreline. That does not include the bins. You've seen the litter bins. They were full in some places. They're half empty elsewhere. People's behavior in not taking their litter away is shocking and disgusting. Um, so I've got 546 comments that I can't even get to. This is going to take me all day to get back to. Um, so uh, I can't cover everything. We're running out of time. It's gone half past twelve. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I think if you want to know what Chris Chope's written to me, you probably want to, uh, to to contact Chris. But I will just add that the the MPs have been great. I have a meeting with them every week. Um, I have a meeting every Friday. Uh, me and the MPs and the chief executive uh, and the leader of the opposition comes along as well. Uh, I have a meeting with them and the police every Wednesday, and I have a meeting with them, the, the MPs and the NHS every Thursday, and a government call every Thursday as well. So we're working really hard with our, our colleagues, lobbying the, 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 uh, the government, using our MPs, and um, I'm horrendous, I think it's horrendous what happened in Parliament yesterday where they weren't allowed to carry on working virtually. That disenfranchises some of our MPs, and if our MPs are different, disenfranchised, that means we're disenfranchised, so I'm really unhappy about that. Um, we're all working virtually. I don't see why the police can't. Um, so... Um, Somebody's asked, why was the mass gathering of demonstrators allowed yesterday? Um, actually, that's a police matter. But um, unless you're doing a march, you don't have to ask permission to hold a, a protest. Anyone can protest. It is part of the uh, British way is that um, public protests are allowed. I've been on plenty of protests myself, um, and I reserve the right for anyone to protest. I simply ask that people social distance when they do it. Um, okay, I'm going to have to call it a day. I've got meetings coming up all afternoon. I will do my best to answer as many of these questions as I can. A lot of them are repeats. So if they're repeats, I'm not going to answer each one uh, purely because I am finishing about midnight at the moment and I just can't, um, I can't answer every question that are the same. So um, thanks everyone for your time. I'll see you all again soon. And um, you know, please keep on supporting the council uh, in the work that they're doing. Our staff are absolutely amazing and I have great respect to everybody who's out there working in these difficult times. Thanks very much. Take care.